This video is going to look and sound a bit different because it's coming from the top of a flight case in the middle of a crew room with all the sort of fans and equipment and crew in the room so there may be voices and other noises. I'll just let you know in advance because it's a completely different environment from normal. So this is a xyloband. It's one of a, a few different types and these are supplied to uh, the audience at some concerts and basically speaking it sort of tightens up in the wrist like this and it contains a little microcontroller um, and some batteries and it has LEDs in the strap and it means that when they send codes out during the show they can actually make the audience's wrists light up and burst into flames and things like that and the way of controlling them the, there's two different versions there's a the infrared version and there's the wireless version and this is the wireless version and if I unscrew the, the back here there's actually two battery compartments in this one contains two lithium cells, uh, 216 I think it is. Let's see if I can prise that out. There's a little screwdriver bit. There we go. And the other battery is a single 2032. And as far as I can see, uh, well, well, I'll show you the circuitry inside them in due course. Let's get this open first. Not particularly easy to go open. There we go. So that's uh, one large cell. And then if I prise this one out... Is this going to come out easily? Yeah. That contains the two... Uh, are they 2016? Yes, 2016. So there's one 2032 and two, 2016. I think the 2016 are for the LEDs and the 2032 is probably just to control the processor in this. So let's take a look inside. It's held together with four screws. And that should reveal the circuit board. I'm not 100% sure where the, how the LEDs are wired, but we'll find that out when I open it, I guess. Okay. Right, the LEDs are connected by four wires up either side. I thought these bands were just one color. I wonder if they actually do two colors. Right, uh, I can see a couple of chips under here. I'm just going to pause momentarily while I investigate what these chips are. And uh, I'll probably take this covering off and we'll see what the LEDs look like too. So now I've uh, taken the cover off. It turns out there's uh, four LEDs on each side of the band, but they are all combed across. So I'm guessing that they've used those wires. Partly as a mechanical anchorage and partly just to make sure it lights evenly along the full length, given it's quite low voltage. The chips are a small RF receiver chip which is a generic uh, unit 43621 uh, the actual number on it is 43621B and then underneath it says BCLOM9 the larger chip is an Atmel chip but it seems to be custom because it's got the number uh, Atmel XB-RGB-01 and the XB almost certainly stands for Xyloband because that's the, the name of the brand RGB is probably just well that's what it does, red, green, blue and it must be the first version of the software they've used. I'm guessing it's just bulk program chips with a custom number on them. After that, uh, that looks like a small, perhaps a crystal reference for the RF circuitry. I don't see an antenna on it unless it's really well hidden in amongst these tracks. But, uh, well, obviously there must be an antenna, but uh, it seems to be well hidden unless it's uh, coupled onto the wires and around the band, which is possible too. And then the drivers appear to be these two little chips here, which are... Uh, probably dual MOSFET packages to give, well, just basically three drivers, the red, green and blue plus plus a spare, I guess. So there's not really an awful lot in them, but then again, these things are mass-produced. They're designed to be very, very cheap, uh, so they can, well, basically hand them out to every member of the audience. So that's what's inside the wireless Xyloband. Oh, I should also mention, the LEDs are the 50-50 type, uh, the sort of six-lead version with the um, just the standard red, green and blue chip no uh, other integrated circuits inside not smart LEDs, just bare red, green, blue LEDs so yeah, it's, it's fairly neat I've just thought of something that I should have mentioned with these uh, Xyloband devices there does seem to be a mode that when uh, the show is finished, ultimately these are a disposable item, it seems wasteful but that's just the way it is but uh, there seems to be a mode that uh, on some of the band systems, uh, I'm not sure if Xyloband's the only company that makes these, but some of them, they send a end of concert uh, 
sort of control signal and it just puts it into colour change mode and it will literally then just change through the colours or do sort of various effects until the batteries run flat. But if I stick the batteries back in this, it just does nothing. Um, it really needs that control code to do something. And I'm guessing that since these have been around for a while, that there must be websites on the internet that people have probably reverse engineered the protocol, maybe. Maybe even taken one of these units in and tapped off uh, with a sort of maybe a wee data log or something just to analyse what codes are being sent to these. But um, I'm guessing that there must probably be a website somewhere on the internet that shows the sort of protocols used to actually control these. But sadly, you know, if, if you don't have access to the radio transmitting equipment or other stuff like that, then uh, ultimately, when it, when it, once the you know once the show is finished and your your battery runs out and your xylo band, then it's just sort of dead. So it does seem wasteful, but you know it's just the way these things operate.